Major Tom, and welcome to whatever we're doing right now. We're talking to Mike, the lead singer and the creator of the band New Zero God. He's got a brand new album dropping right now. So anyway, this is the CD. It's also going to come out on vinyl, and it's going to be released in how many countries? Everywhere. Everywhere. Worldwide, Mars, the moon, and maybe in downtown uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Thanks for setting this up, first of all. Thank you for, for you being here. I was looking for my car. I, I lost my car. <laughs> That's what I'm doing in this neighborhood, actually. It's, no, I'm only kidding. How long has New Zero God been together now? New Zero God has been together since 2006 with uh, ch lineup changes. But this time, um, the, the, the final lineup has been around for about a year or something. This is your second album? Uh, this is the third album of New Zero God. Okay. And this is the tenth album of mine. The tenth album of yours. All right. Uh, for anybody that like wants to find out your history rather than bore them with blah, blah, where can they go and find out the history of New Zero God and the bands that you had previous? What's, what pages can we look at on the internet? Of course, they can Google the whole thing, like Mike Pugunas or New Zero God or the Flowers of Romance or Nexus, but they can also uh, visit the NewZeroGod.com website of the of the band, and uh, they can also visit the Bandcamp of New Zero God. So the information is out there to bring everybody up to date. What we're going to do today is talk about from this point, maybe yesterday, on forward. Yeah, yeah. So in 2006, we formed New Zero God because I was tired of holding the mouse and doing all this thing with uh, the monitor. And uh, we started playing a dark, a dark rock and roll thing, uh, which on the first album, it sounded a bit more punkier. Then on the second, the first album was called Fun is a Four Letter Word. The second album, which was uh, uh, titled 2013, it was a little bit more gothier. And the third album now, Short Tales and Tall Shadows, it's an album which is goth and dark and it's a bit weird, if I, if I may say so. But the thing that you've maintained in all of your bands and all the music that you've composed, played live and recorded is the stuff's melodic. You've never let go of melodies. You've never let go of, you understand, as, as yeah, opposed Yeah, I, I like melodies and melodic <laughs> lines, you know. I it's, like, it's, it's, it's like, even though, even though you've gone into a darker, harder genre of music, you've not put out metal machine music where you put a cat in a blender. No. Right? No, I never did that. Yeah, you've, you've always maintained melody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, inspirations as far as songwriters, uh, melody... Uh, Meisters and stuff like that. Who's who's like impressed you since you were a kid? I mean, like, who knocked you flat on your ass when you first heard them on the radio? I think it was the Doors or some band like that because it, we we have to go long way back to to find who did that to me. But I think it was. And they're still wanted by the FBI. <laughs> uh, I think it was the Doors for the first time, and uh, you know all these classic rock bands and slowly it turned into punk rock and finally it ended up with uh, the Bauhaus, Joy Division, Susie the Bunches and, and acts like this. Demographically, do you find a lot of younger people coming into appreciating the genre of music that you guys are doing? No, I think the genre is uh, getting, is becoming a bit old. Really? Uh, most of the mainstream media is focused on uh, other music styles, so... We're talking Britney, Ja... Yeah, 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 all this. Bieber, Bobber, and, and all these people. Right. And uh, since the media is not focused on this genre, uh, the genre is not having new blood, so it's, it's getting old now. Interesting point, interesting point. So, uh, States. Mm-hmm. You've got a radio show that's heard in California. Yeah. You've got a radio show that's heard, heard in what part of France? Uh, Bordeaux. In, excuse me, in Bordeaux, France. 
Uh, also in England, you were here, part of a radio show in England too, yeah, right? Wicked, Wicked Spins Radio. Wicked Spins Radio. Any invites for you to come with your band to play? Is it difficult to tour? I mean, is there like really like no money anywhere? The thing is that lately everyone is having a financial problem and uh, I can understand why um, lately DJs are having all this success because it's one person, the expenses are less than calling four or five or eight guys to uh, come have a show. You're calling one DJ and that's it. This album, tell me about this album, tell me about the songs, what you were thinking about when you were writing the tunes and what are some of the tunes on here? I started writing the lyrics about the album. Um, the first song is based on a short story that Edgar Allan Poe wrote. And he published, I think, back in 1835, something like that. And uh, I tried to be consistent to the whole album on this macabre atmosphere that King Pest the First uh, was into. So this is what it has to do with the lyrics. I mean, the first song is Edgar Allan Poe's, the one that closes the uh, the album. It is closing with ravens, and the raven was the most. That was, his, that was his version of Dark yeah. Side of the Moon. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? So basically you write the poetry first and then put the music on it. No, it was... The music came first. And what we were trying to do was to have this atmosphere, this macabre atmosphere, right. musically in, in, the, in the whole album. Now, when we recorded the, the songs and we started remixing, I wanted to expand the sound of the band a little bit more in new fields instead of staying in the gothic sound that we were having before. Okay. So we added a, a little bit of psychedelic uh, 60s uh, instruments or some um, more psychedelic feelings and psychedelic feelers in, in the songs and uh, we try to make it a bit more like a movie where the listener could get inside the uh, the sound and take a trip and yeah and take a trip uh, of course with the uh, uh, with the financial ability that we had because we are a DIY band and we are not uh, a band that has to do anything with a multinational record label so basically also this music with you know, the changes that you've made and the expansion that you've done in the sound probably would fit nice in somewhere in a movie. It could be, yeah. Have um, you ever been approached by any filmmakers uh, for any of your songs? Three years ago, yeah. we were approached by uh, an English uh, movie director. He was uh, coming to Greece to do a movie called Athens Drift. Athens Drift. Athens Drift. Oh, Athens Drift, okay. And um, the band played the band of the road, and uh, I had the part like being a, a street philosopher, uh, speaking about the uh, situation and what the financial uh, status is uh, doing to the people and all these things. Which is happening worldwide. Yeah. Banksters versus the rest of everybody. Yeah, bankers, corporations, and pulling the strings of the politicians. So being a, being a street smart kid, yeah. a little bit older, but still a street smart kid, <laughs> what are the ways around the obstacles that were there yesterday and are really there today? How do you get around it? What, what ways do, like, you know, kids are going to be watching this to say, okay, it's a, I've got a band, I want to put my stuff out, what do I do? What, what advice? would you give for people to like get around the obstacles that are here today? You have to do, you have to try and make your dreams come true. I mean, you don't have to try and make somebody else's dreams come true. I mean, uh, you have to be, and you have to be persistent to what you're doing. You, you would love to do this thing uh, for yourself, you should do it. I mean, play music, uh, become some athlete, become some hermit, I don't know what you want to do. You have to do it because 
anything else, anything that is not part of you, anything that is part of somebody else's dream, is going to kill you. YouTube, Vimo, very, very popular. It's where mo most of the younger people actually hear and see their music because they're visually involved. Um, what are your plans for making a video, seeing that that's been the game for the past 30 years? Okay, you're doing, a, uh, you're doing the video because these are promotional tools. Uh -huh. uh, and you're uploading it in YouTube and you hope that it will help you. Of course, because again, because the information is too much. It's a tsunami. You have to take the video yeah. and try all the other ways uh -huh. in order to spread the video. So it's not only YouTube. If you, if you do a video on, on YouTube, it doesn't mean that you're going to be famous. Because you don't have the backup yeah, steps to push it. Exactly. So uh, it's a chain that you have to follow uh -huh. in order to, to, to make your video uh, become a productive tool, right. a, a productive promotional tool. That's the whole thing. Live gigs, what do you guys have in store for live gigs? I imagine there's, your phone must be ringing off the hook of people wanting to see you do this live. We have... And there they are. Yeah. You're gonna keep that in there, right? Yeah. Sure. All right. <laughs> so, you can't plan that shit, right? Are we playing there? What did they say? Did you book it? Mm -hmm. You're fired. <laughs> I feel like Donald Trump. You're fired. Forget about it. Since we are a DIY band, what we always have in mind is you release an album this year, you work on it, you, you work on your promotion, and the next year you go out you try to find gigs. Because you don't have the money that a, a big label would spend on you. Uh, in to get it done in a month. Yeah. Wow. So they have the money and they buy time. You have the time and you buy money, let's say. Sure. So for a do-it-yourself band, it takes that long to get some traction. It's the underground. This is what the underground, this is what, what is going on in the underground. Television. So anything happening on television for do-it-yourself bands, regardless of whether they're pop or if they're gothic or if no. they're industrial? No, no, no. There's nothing happening on television? No. Uh, FM radio, is there anything, anybody pushing you guys? Anybody pushing other bands? Uh, FM radio is a very... It's, what they are doing, the radio stations were cutting down the expenses in order to have bigger profit. So they fired the producers. Yeah. They maybe have some cute girls telling you what time it is every hour on the hour because yeah. that's what you got to do according to law. Mm -hmm. How the hell does anybody find out anything anymore? Well, the only way to find things is uh, through the internet. Through the internet, through uh, e-zines as opposed yeah, yeah, to yeah. fanzines. Yeah, and... yeah. This is the only thing you can do. So what does somebody have to do in order to get put on the corporate pr playlist if they don't own you? Do you buy your way in? Do you got to like know somebody? Even if you know somebody, it doesn't work. What's the, what's the story? I think you happen? buy your way in. Yeah? I think so. I don't know. Pay to play. I think so. You know, that's killed the music scene in L.A., by the way. Bands have to pay to play. Yeah, but this is why, this is why we have all this problem with um, the, the audience getting less and less. And this is why young people are getting less and less because in order to to have something to have to have an audience you have to promote something to this audience if you can't promote anything you have nothing i have friends who are listening to this corporate radio stations that know exactly what song will follow the song that they are listening now sure right so it's it's stupid uh, or it's genius in a way for anybody that has the connections or the money or the collective group to go and buy a station for a few hours that's faltering and just like go old school on them. You guys are good. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for the whole thing. Buy the album and go see these guys live. They got a great sound. It sounds like a studio in the club. Thank you. Bye.